Well, we're on in an odd time today, are we not? That's okay. It'll all be all right. And as has been the case here of late, I'm completely unprepared. But that's okay. You're always kind to me anyway. Hello, Scott. Hello, Nicholas. Let me see who else we've got going on here. Let me get this. Let me get this rolling over here. Let me see what we got. Oh, Anna Sue Fritter. My aunt. Hello, Jimmy Hayes. Good evening, Brother Les. Good evening. All right, let me get some stuff turned on here. It is Facebook Live with Les. Southern Gospel Music, Memorabilia, Memories, and Ministry. I got some uh, vinyl for you for the memorabilia today, and I think that's all the memorabilia that I brought with me today. Yesterday we had a cool piece. I forgot what it was. but Oh, some uh, old pictures back around 1980 or so when I promoted the Inspirations, and they were in my store that I owned in Griffith, Indiana. And so some uh, unique pictures, unique only to me on account of they were, they were my pictures. <laughs> All right, we got Nathan Morris, we got Jamie, we got Linwood, we got John, we got Bobby. Hey to everybody. Good to see everyone. Um, we will be looking at, uh, let's see, what year are we going to be in this year? We're going to be in 1998, Freedom Hall, Louisville, Kentucky. Hello, Brother Bill. Brother Radio Alabama Bill. Or is that uh, the grandson? I get y'all confused. I don't know. All right. Let's see here. Well, here. Always going to do this, but I forgot today. Buy a hat. <laughs> Old Time Preachers Quartet. I find my mouth happy. Go to oldtimepreachersquartet.com and uh, go to the store. I can't believe my church hasn't bought all my hats. Matter of fact, they haven't bought any. Oh, well. It's all right. I thought they would like it because it, it upholds old-time religion. And that's what they're about. That's why I go there. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Uh, okay. December 7, 8, and 9, we're going to preach and eat and sing and eat and preach, and eat, and eat, and sing, and sing and eat, and preach. And right there it is, right there. So call 865-278-3681, uh, 865-278-3681. And uh, we'd love for you to be at our Christmas camp meeting in the Smokies, December 7, 8, 9, Old Time Preachers Quartet, myself, Barry Rowland, and Deliverance. There you go. We see uh, Bob Sellers and Sacred Harmony and Sherry Taylor and uh, Chelsea Estes and Paul Bolin and Covenant. And we're probably going to add more. Uh, once we get past this coronavirus, we'll start digging into uh, some more of that. Okay, jot down this toll-free number. Hello, Rebecca. Hello, James Michael Rainey. Good to see you. Hello, Brother Hamlin. Good to see you. All right, jot down this number, 800-360-5051, 800-360-5051. And um, I want you to call that number. It's going to take you all of about 27 and a half seconds and answer the following question. Which of the five favorite trio nominees do you think will win in the 2020 Singing News Fan Awards? Will it be the Booth Brothers, Brian Freed Assurance, Greater Vision, Jeff and Sherry Easter, or the Whiznitz? Who do you think it's going to be? 800-360-5051. Tell me who you think is going to win. And then if, if you have someone that you think should have been nominated that wasn't, well, won't you say that? Tell, tell me who that is. Call 800-360-5051. All right. Now, I had uh, Elaine Wilburn of the Wilburns text me today. Hello, Brother Isaac. Um, and she has, uh, she wants you to help her. I'll read this verbatim. She said this was a, this would be a good trivia question for the viewers, and it kind of it, it's kind of a trivia trivia question, and it's kind of not, but you'll see what I mean. Maybe you have the answer. It says hi, Les. I have a trivia question for your viewers. On May 29, ninth, nineteen ninety three, 
The Wilburns sang in the Chevrolet Geo Theater at Opryland with the Statesmen, the Stamps, the Hoppers, the Neelands, the Magruders. Also on the program was Shonda Pierce. I recorded in a journal that there were 3,000 people in attendance. I think there was a promotional name for that event outside on the back lot, the way I remember. Does anyone remember what the name of the event was? She didn't write it down. And she thought that might be interesting. In other words, she wants to know what it is so she can put that in her journal. <laughs> gotcha, Miss Elaine. She's at Revival tonight, so she's not watching, but she's going to watch later tonight. Miss Elaine, I just got gotcha. you. You want, you want that answer for you, not for the trivia question. But it is a pretty good uh, question. Was anybody there that's watching me tonight? Or who will be watching um, the replays of this throughout the, throughout the next few days? You know, we have several hundred, sometimes thousands of people that watch this thing over just a, a day or two period. Uh, last night's has already been seen by like 3,000 people. So, maybe uh, one of you were there. Uh, again, it was an event on May 29th, 1993, the Chevy Geo Theater at Opryland. It was the Wilburns, the Statesmen, Stamps, Hoppers, Neelands, Magruders, and Ch Shonda Pierce, and uh, about 3,000 people in attendance. What was the name of that event? Does anybody remember? Do you remember? If so, um, reply to, uh, to this show as you're watching it, Okay. We'll try to help you, Miss Elaine, Miss Elaine Wilburn. We're trying our best to help you. Okay, write this down. Tonight, in less than an hour, at 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern Time, I will be the guest of Alan Presley, of Alan Presley Promotions. So go to his Facebook page. It's A-L-L-E-N-P-R-E-S-L-E-Y. And uh, he will be there uh, playing music. He doesn't do what I do with the memorabilia and the memories and all that stuff. He plays music. And for whatever reason, he wanted to interview me tonight. So after, as soon as we're done here, at 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern, I will be the guest of Alan Presley. Hello, Rebecca Rochester Matthews from Scott. Hey, Brother Les. Kevin Ward, Kevin California Ward. Sup, dude. That's, isn't that what y'all do in California? Sup. Is that, isn't that what it is? <laughs> Michael Lovelace, who else is on here? Uh, Roger Spears, uh, Deborah Gould, uh, David Ford, Tony Clower, Michael Lovelace, and many others I've already said. So, hey to y'all. Okay, so 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern. I'm going to be there with um, Alan Presley tonight uh, as his guest. We got the Elaine Wilburn question. We want you to join us at the Christmas camp meeting there in the old Smokies right there. Call my 800 number, number and tell me who you think is going to win in the favorite trio category tonight. 800-360-5051. Oh, there you go. There, that's it, <laughs> Kevin. 800-360-5051. <laughs> and um, the favorite trio nominees again, Booth Brothers, Brian Free and Assurance, Greater Vision, Jeff and Sherry, Easter Wizards. All right. All of that whew, is out of the way. So now it is time to look at the September 2013 issue of Singing News Magazine right there. NQC, the Louisville Years, Volume 1, the 20 years that they were at, the, at Freedom Hall. And we started in 1994, and now we have made our way up. It's taken us like a couple weeks because there's a bunch of pictures we've been looking at and playing music and all that. But uh, we're now in 1998, so let's take a look at some of these here. Some of these pictures are cut in half. I'll unfold the whole magazine here in a minute. But uh, right here, this is the Hopper's booth, which was always a big corner booth, an end cap, an end display there with the Hoppers. And then you've got uh, Debbie Talley and Sherry Steele of the Steels right there, just hanging out, smiling, yakking it up. That's a good picture. And then you've got uh, Phil Cross there at his booth. There's Brother Phil, one of the greatest songwriters ever, right up in there. Then we've got, uh, let's see, Southern Gospel's version of the three tenors. You've got uh, Brian Free, Jay Perrick, and Ernie Haas singing Looking for a City. You know that got up there squeaky high. Look at him right there. It's hard to be a man and sing like a woman. But those three are doing it right there. So those are some good pictures right there. Now let's go over here. We see Ken Davis 
hosting the 1998 Singing News Fan Awards with our friend whom we miss greatly, Jerry Goff. For my two cents, the greatest MC ever. We've had some great MCs, and you could argue some others, and I kind of wouldn't argue with you because they're, they're great. But man, I'm telling you, Jerry Goff, where Jerry Goff really, 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 really stood out is whenever something would happen in a concert and, um, you know, like the, the PA system would go down or the lights would go off or there'd be some sort of huge catastrophe. And then all of a sudden, hey, Mrs. Hamblin, God bless you. Hey, right back to you. Um, all of a sudden, you know, everything's down for 15 minutes, and there's Jerry Goff on the stage all by himself, nothing else going on, no sound system, no light, whatever, no lights, whatever's going on. And then he fills that gap of 15 minutes with story after story after story after story after story, and um, his mind and his memory was unbelievable, is what I'm saying. For my two cents, the greatest MC ever. And also, a mighty fine writer, and a mighty fine singer, and a mighty fine trumpet blower. And he had himself a mighty, mighty fine group, Jerry and the Singing Goff. So there he is right there. And so we're going to start with playing a uh, Jerry Goff song tonight. And this is uh, from the album I Am Blessed. I was going to play that because that's... That's one of my all-time favorite Jerry Goff songs. It really is. But instead, I am going to play the other hit from that record. And I mean, it was forevermore a hit. And it, it was titled, I Stand Before Him Guilty. And I saw all men standing before the great tribunal of heaven. And Jesus, our advocate, and lawyer asked his father, the great judge of all men, what the verdict would be if men refused Calvary. And I heard the great judge say, Guilty. Guilty, I stand before you. Listen. 
from the album I Am Blessed, a song written by this man right here, Clarence Jones. The, most of the songs on this album was written by him, and uh, Brother Jerry actually put Clarence's picture on the album. Isn't that a good one? That is one of my all-time favorite Jerry Goff songs. That one and the title song from this one, I Am Blessed and I Stand Before Him Guilty. Well, we were all guilty. But God's love and compassion set us free. That's a great song right there. I stand before him guilty. Isn't that good? We're 1998. That's what it says right there. 1998. We're showing you some pictures. We just showed you the Jerry Goff picture there. Here's a picture of the Greens cake. They were celebrating 20 years right there. 20 years in 1998. So that means they started in 78. I'm good at ciphering. There they are. There's the cake. Then we have the hoppers here singing Shoutin' Time. You ever heard the hoppers sing Shoutin' Time? Boy, they get the crowd revved up with that. And, what time is it? Shoutin' Time with the hoppers, 1998. That's about when the song was really getting hot for them. And did you know, though, there's a little... You know, Southern Gospel memories here for you. They weren't the first group to have that out. Matter of fact, they real, they weren't even the first one to have it out as a hit. The Inspirations did it back in the 70s, and they had a smash on it, Shouting Time. And it was on their uh, their big uh, Warner Robins Live recordings. So, just a little information there for you. And here you have, uh, there you have the Roops singing. We featured, I think, the Roops yesterday or a couple days ago in the 1997 part of uh, the Singing News, or the and National Quartet Convention there in Freedom Hall. And let's see, there is, um, there's Bill Gaither, right there, Bill Gaither, the trio, or no, uh, that's, uh, he's, he's doing the uh, sing-along, that's when uh, the whole crowd, he, he leads them all in sing-along with a bunch of old hymns, and uh, that's always a good thing. Then I'm going to open this up, and then we're going to go to our next song. Right here is the Gaither Vocal Band, right here in the middle, right there. There's the Gaither Vocal Band. And we're going to go back and pull an old, 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 old Gaither Vocal Band a song from a piece of vinyl. I'm going to do it right now, as a matter of fact, since we're talking about the Gaither Vocal Band. This is from their very, 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 very first album ever as the Gaither Vocal Band. As I, as I picked this up, I thought that was the case. And uh, sure enough, I read the back jacket, and it was uh, their very first album ever. And I'll show you the picture of it here in a minute. Um, but let me get it here. And they did. Here, let me read some of it because it's, it's, it's good reading. It all started, although it's in very small print and a very weird font on this, on this album jacket. And ain't no way in the world you can read it because I can barely read it. And I may miss some of the words, but it says, It all started when Bill talked to about a half million people in the Gaither Trio concerts last year. All across America, through England, all around Scandinavia, in Ireland, Scotland, and Canada. He let us know he loved quartet singing. He talked about the specialness of four guys singing harmony. He reminisced about the quartets he had heard on the radio and in concert as a boy. And he told us about the quartets deservedly obscure that he sang in when he was young. Then he introduced Gary McSpadden, Lee Young, and Steve Green to join him in singing the old quartet standard, Your First Day in Heaven. That's when it happened. That's when the Gaither Vocal Band was birthed. And right there are the first four guys. And what you say, we listen to the very song that brought them to the table. Now, I'm probably going to miss... I'm probably going to skip around on this because the turntable's over my head and I can't see where all of the uh, where all of the cuts are in the vinyl. So I'm just going to get as close as I can and then y'all pray and we'll see what happens here. Let's see. 
Let's see if this might be it. If it's not, I'll keep hunting it down. Gaither Vocal Band, their first song is a quartet on their first album. I don't think that's it. Maybe it is, let's see. First day in heaven. No, that's not it. <laughs> Here we go, let's try this. Now we got it. <laughs> hey, Brother Ronnie. This was, I think, like 1981, I think. 1981, sure enough. So as he was touring throughout Canada and Scandinavia and all the places that you just heard there, Scotland, um, all across America in 1980, he talked about his love for quartet music, and then he brought the guys up to sing one quartet song, and they did that one right there, Your First Day in Heaven, which I guess every quartet in the world has either at least sung it, if not recorded, Your First Day in Heaven. And so uh, that was the Gaither Vocal Band right there with your first day in heaven. Their first quartet album, first quartet cut right there. So how about that for uh, some memorabilia? A couple pieces of vinyl. And uh, we'll keep going. Let's keep looking at some pictures here. We're going to uh, get a CD out here and play a song from a CD in just a moment. All right, let's keep looking. Let's see here. We've got... Uh, Okay, we got the greens and the hoppers here in this this top middle picture. They're singing together, doing something together there. The greens and the hoppers. And of course, Dean Hopper thought Kim Green was cute. For long they were married, and Kim became a Kim Green Hopper. I'm not kidding. There they are. <laughs> John, Brother John says, <laughs> God bless whoever preached the funeral of the leisure suit. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see, where is it? Let's see, did I show a leisure suit here somewhere? I don't know. Maybe I did. I can't see that they did. Was it on one of the albums? Let me see. Where's the leisure suit at? What's going on? I don't know. Anyway, I can't see the leisure suit, but it's funny anyway, Brother John. <laughs> okay, now look at here. Look at here. Michael Booth being Michael Booth right here in the middle. Right here. Look at this. He's just not right. He's just simply not right. Look at him right there. He's not right. That boy. I'd love to interview his mother sometime. 
I bet you it would be a great interview. Let's see who else we are. We got the Hoppers. I showed you that already. There's Gerald Wolf. Um, he made a mistake. He called Rodney Balkum something else. And uh, so he was bowing at Rodney's feet there. Where is he? Right there. Begging his forgiveness. That's Gerald there bowing down. Rodney just won DJ of the year. And uh, <laughs> he messed up uh, Rodney's name, Gerald did. Oh, well, that happens. I've done that before. And if the Lord doesn't come back, I will do it again. Let me see here. I'm missing something. Oh, here are the McCamies right here. Right there, the McCamies. We love the McCamies. You know we love the McCamies. And anybody that doesn't love the McCamies, don't tell me. Because I'll defriend you. They're talking about defunding the police. I'll defriend you. <laughs> Love the McCabe. Matter of fact, we're going to let them sing our last song of that. Let me read some of these things here before we play the song, though. Tim McFarlane of the Adams Family. You got to do it like that, like the, the, old, the old show, The Adams Family. Da -da -da -da. He sings with the Adams Family. John, Brother John, Gaither album, Les Butler. Rebecca Ann Roberts is watching. Michael Miner's watching. Miss Maggie. Carol Skeens, Kim Jackson, Bill Wolf, Olin Witt. How you doing, Olin? Brother Rodney, Brother Jacksonville, Florida Rodney, Brother Ronnie Barfield, great pe preacher. Good to see you, Brother Ronnie. Terry Carter, Blake, Josh, Lou, Patty, Sherry Taylor, Patty Graham, Tony Allen Bates, Danny Tuttle. Man, there's just all kinds of folks on today. We're thankful for that. We've had about 3,000 people watch the show from last night, so I mean... Wow, that was good. Matter of fact, while I'm thinking of it, everybody hit share. Go ahead, share. Did you hit share? I should have had, uh, since I played the Gaither vocal band, I should have uh, bought up a, a picture or two of a bunch of pictures that I have. Let me see, do I have this one piece here? I could, yeah, hold on a second. I'm gonna show, oh. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. I'm going to show you my T-shirt. Now, Brother John, you could have weird socks. I can have weird T-shirts. <laughs> I'm just sitting in my house. But merry heart doeth good like a medicine. And so when we're done with the show tonight, I want you to go to Alan Presley's page because he's going to interview me tonight. So I'm going to do his program. Then after all of that, I want you to promise me something. Because before you go to bed, you'll go to bed with laughter in your heart and you will be blessed. I want you to go to YouTube and look up Crambone. Crambone. Now promise me you're going to do it. And get ready to just absolutely laugh your head off. Merry heart doeth good like a medicine. I'm preaching now. <laughs> Alright, here's a... Uh, Here's a little memorabilia piece I can show you. This is from Bill Gaither. I've got a few of these. He's written me several personal notes throughout the years. And there's his personal note. I can never read his writing, but let's see. Les, thanks for the something something we had a something. I don't know... Something, something happened, something, something. Let's do it again. <laughs> Bill Gaither, right there. So there you go. This is Facebook Live with Les Southern Gospel Music Memorabilia, Memories, and Ministry. So there you go. Don't forget to look up Crambone on YouTube. Mary Hart with Good Like a Medicine. Now, Back to these folks right here, my friends, the McCamies. My friends, the McCamies. And I'm going to dial up. Last week, I played something from this album because they were on, uh, I think, the 1996 pictorial there in the Singing News magazine. I'm going to go to um, song number four. 
and if it's the version, if it's the one I'm thinking, just let it bless you. I was on the phone today with the DJ. I'm not going to say who, who it was, but he's a wonderful man. And uh, over the years, we've had a few times where just full-on church broke out as we were talking. I was doing radio promotion calls for the, for the groups and the singers that I work with. And so I call the charting stations, be sure they have the music, see if they need anything, get their, get their thoughts on what we're sending and, and, and communicate all that back to the, to the various uh, singers and groups and so forth. But we got to talking about, you know, we got to talking about stuff beyond the CDs and the songs and the music. And, and he, uh, he just started, he started to break, just, just break inside and started to cry. And uh, paraphrasing, paraphrasing, but he said something to the effect of, I'm tired of this world, and I'm longing to go home. Is there anybody watching tonight that can say that you're tired of this world, and you're just longing to go home? I'm putting both hands up. I'm going to put my feet up. You can't see them, but I'm going to put them all up. What we're seeing in this world today, I'm ready to go home. Here are the McCamies. Longing for home. Oh, I love this song. Never mind me here. <laughs> Tell them, Reuben. Yes, hallelujah. And a place to reside and food on my table. But somehow I cannot feel at home here. I'm longing for way. Oh, yeah. No goodbyes are spoken. I'm longing for it. No more pain. Hallelujah. Things of this earth. What's going on today in this earth does not satisfy me, does it, you? One day it's going to be quicker. Someday will be quicker. And this mortal, this mortal shall put is going to put on immortality. Satisfy you. No. time on our phone call today. He was tired of this old world and I was tired along with it. 
He said, I'm longing for home. Yeah, I'm longing for home. It gets sweeter every day. The thoughts of home. Acts chapter 7. Let's we'll start at verse 51. Old brother Stephen. First God called deacon. Talking to the Sanhedrin here. Saying, ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised and hardened ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do, do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. If you preach and teach and tell the truth, it's going to cut like a two-edged sword. And it was cutting them to their very heart. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God. I believe Brother Stephen was longing for a home. Yeah. And said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. You can rest assured he was done with this old world. No more ridiculing. No more stoning. He's just looking at Jesus standing up, giving him a standing ovation. Rest assured, he was longing for home. Hey man, I'm longing for home right along with Brother Stephen. Hey man. Let me keep reading here. It's going somewhere else. I'm going to keep reading. And said, Behold, I see the heavens opened up and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. Oh my, there's so much to say about that. Oh, friends and neighbors, I was a Saul one day till my Damascus Road experience. It became a Paul. Oh, man, don't you know Saul reflected back on that day many times in his journey as he gave the word, the okay, to stone old brother Stephen. Oh, but that's all right. They're walking around together tonight in heaven themselves, having a big old time. Hallelujah. Turn to Philippians chapter 1. Hey, Amen. Philippians chapter 1, verses 21 and 22, as we talk about longing for home. Here's Brother Paul saying, for me to live as Christ and to die, for a child of God dying is not a bad thing. It's not a negative thing. It's a good thing. For me to, lie, uh, to, to live as Christ and to die is gain. Here's where the longing for home comes in. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, yet what I shall choose I want not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart, saying I'm ready for heaven, and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. While we're here, we better be doing something for the Lord. It was needed for him to remain for that time because he had work to do for the Lord. And if you're here and you're saved tonight, you've got work to do for the Lord. 
But I sure can understand what Brother Paul's saying. Man, I'm in a straight betwixt two places. The place where I want to be and the place where I am. Don't you want to go to heaven tonight? I'm longing for home. Amen. And amen. Boy, I have a good time some nights on this. <laughs> like tonight. Hallelujah. Whew, I know one thing. I need to blow my nose. I like it when it gets like that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> if y'all don't like, you know, getting excited and, and getting stirred every once in a while, just don't come on my Facebook Live with Les. Just don't, just stay, just go somewhere else. Because I'm here to tell you, I'm here to do things to make it count. Facebook Live with Les, Southern Gospel Music. I'm going to play songs that count. Memorabilia, I'm going to show you some things that the Lord's blessing with over the years, but I'm going to tie it into something good. Memories, I got them. And ministry is the most important part. We just had a little bit of that. Amen. Well, let's see who's on before I go. Don't forget, go to Alan Presley's Facebook page. Go to Alan Presley's Facebook page right now. Well, not right now, as soon as I'm done. And at 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern Time, we are. he's going to interview me. I don't know what he's going to ask. I don't know what he's going to say. No tell him what is going to happen. But anyway, go there and check it out. John Hamlin ain't real to the <laughs> till they're snot bu bubbles. <laughs> John Hamlin, I love you, brother. Oh yeah. Well, they got real tonight. Then. <laughs> Wayne Helmick, hey, how you doing there, Virginia Wayne? Good to see you, my friend. Hey, my sweet wife got on. Oh, Bev, we've been together forty years. Dated for three, married for 37, and uh, I love her. Tony McGee, Allison, Alice Harbison, David Monroe, Gerald Crow, Dr. Gary Kahn, good to see you, good doctor, Jason Pilant, Isaac Dwight Hughes, I know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, my, uh, don't forget, now, after you threw with Alan Presley's page where he's interviewing me tonight, then go on to YouTube and find Crambone. <laughs> a merry heart doeth good like medicine. Go find Crambone. <laughs> and you'll be glad that you did. I promise you that. All right? <laughs> and then, okay, we've had a bunch of other people there show up. and Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. And we played some music and had little memories and had, had all kinds of stuff. Terry Carter, thanks for allowing the Holy Spirit to use you, brother. Well, and I don't know any other way. I'm not smart enough to conjure stuff up. It's just going to be real the way it is, or it ain't going to be nothing at all for me. So it's the way it is. Hello, Terry Barnett. Good to see everybody. All right. Okay, I'm going to go off now. Hit share if you want. I'd appreciate it. Besides sharing, go to Alan Presley's page, and in just a few minutes, he's going to interview me on his uh, Facebook program, okay? So go check that out. And then, Crambone. <laughs> See you tomorrow, Lord willing.